everyone, I'm Mike, and today this video is going to be about the unveiling of the 2020 convertible Corvette at Candy Space Center. This video is going to be the actual presentation that they offered at the Candy Space Center from the NASA officials, a couple of astronauts, and the Chevy team. So we're going to have another video coming out real soon. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when that comes out of our overview and close-up of all the cars. So until then, enjoy this video. Where's all the Corvette owners out there? There you go. Another C7 myself, so this is an exciting day. Uh, but welcome to Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Yes, my name is Theron Prati. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the complex. And we're thrilled to host the public, public unveiling of the 2020 Corvette Convertible. How exciting is that? Yeah! At NASA, it's often said that we stand on the shoulders of giants. And that is nowhere more apparent than here in the rocket garden. Behind every rocket, there are great men and women, engineers and astronauts, designers and thinkers who turn dreams into history, which are about to see another example of that. Our goal here at the Visitor Complex is to tell the NASA story in the most compelling and immersive way. The astronauts actually have a rich history and appreciation of the Corvette since the beginning of America's crew space program. Ed Cole, president of General, Man of General Motors with Jim Rathman, Chevrolet of Melbourne, Florida, offered the astronauts a special plan in which they were given the use of any Chevrolet automobile for one year at the very nominal cost of one dollar. For many astronauts, Corvette was their choice. And we did confirm last night, that, I'm just kidding, but Chevy's gonna confirm another dollar again. The astronauts are thrilled about that. So. Today, we are fortunate to have many astronauts here with us. Could you all please stand? I know most of you over here, and thank you all for being here. Can you raise your hands? And I can tell you many of them are Corvette owners. As a matter of fact, we had to reach out to Fred, Fred Hayes of Apollo 13. He couldn't make it, but he did say, I only go fast in the air. So that was his comment. So anyway, right now I'd like to introduce you to a real astronaut, Bruce Melnick, who served as the mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Discovery for STS-41 in 1990, and was part of the crew of the STS-49 on the maiden flight of Space Shuttle Endeavour. In 1992, when Melnick served as flight engineer. So please, welcome Bruce to say a few words. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. What, what, a, what a great day. I mean, to be part of this here. Uh, you know, I, I think back and just how long I've been waiting for a mid-engine Corvette. I'm sure a lot of Corvette enthusiasts thought they were going to be out here a long time before now. But wow, waiting for that mid-engine Corvette and now the convertible. And when you see the convertible, it's, it's just amazing. But waiting for that reminded me of waiting to fly on the very first flight of the Space Shuttle Endeavour back in 1992. Kept waiting and waiting and finally we got to go on it. So it was an awesome flight and this is going to be an awesome flight in this car. Uh, like many other astronauts, we are, I am a Corvette enthusiast, Corvette owner, Corvette fan. Between my wife Kim and I, we are on our ninth Corvette right now. And we're, well, thank you. We're, we're currently driving a 2016 Z06 C, uh, C7R Special Edition as our daily driver. I mean, we drive it. It's just a wonderful car. You know, having, and, and I, I really want to take um, Theron's offer up or the Corvette team's offer up on the, one of those dollar purchases, dollar leads. We'll be, we'll be ready to go with that deal. But uh, having been a Corvette owner for so long and having so many of the different series, you know, it's three, three, four, five, six, seven, um, I've had the opportunity to watch the performance of these Corvettes just just go up uh, like a rocket. I mean, it's amazing where we started and where we are. Matter of fact, if you think about my Z06 right now, it takes about the same length of time and same distance for my Corvette to reach 100 miles per hour like the space shuttle did. So performance has come a long way, but I can tell you, you know, one of them's horizontal, one of them's vertical on those, that acceleration. But I can tell you right now, with the Corvettes the way they are, that first four seconds in a Corvette is a heck of a lot smoother than a space shuttle. <laughs> so anyway, with that, uh, I'd like to get this launched. Let's launch this convertible road rocket, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Theron. 
Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Bruce. And now I'd like to welcome another astronaut, Steve Smith, a veteran of four space flights covering 16 million miles and seven space walk totaling 49 hours and 25 minutes. So please welcome Steve Smith to say a few words. Thank you, Hank. Well, good morning, everyone. A big day here. I see lots of uh, folks I ran in along the road this morning. I was driving in, in my little rental car from the airport. I won't say the brand name. It was very small, though. And I saw a gathering of 25 Corvettes along the road there. That was the Cape Canaveral Corvette Club. Thank you for greeting me this morning. And the all the Corvette owners. Fantastic. It's a beautiful sight in front of the front gate. If you haven't had a chance to go out there in the last half hour or so, there must be a couple hundred cars out there, uh, Corvettes out there. So, so glad you're all here today. Um, it's a thrill, of course, to be here as we look at this uh, beautiful new car, a new generation, the C8, and the 2020 convertible version of it. Um, as you've heard, there's been this long association between the space program, the astronauts, and the Chevrolet Corvette. The Corvette is the iconic American sports car with all of its incredible features. Uh, the early astronauts were iconic also. They were our heroes. And so it's no big surprise that those icons drove America's iconic space car. And as you heard, Chevy did have this lease program for the early astronauts. Um, and I can tell you that many of the astronauts still continued to drive Corvettes for years afterwards because of the, the allure of the car. Um, as a young child growing up in California, I had two dreams. One was to be an astronaut and one was to be a Corvette owner. They both came true. Um, in fourth grade, in fourth grade, I started drawing pictures of rocket ships and spacewalkers. And after about 30 years and five applications, they finally accepted me. But more to the point today, talking about the Corvettes. Uh, in sixth grade, my family moved from one house in San Jose, California to another. And I was lucky enough to meet my life's best friend there, Jim. And his family owned a 1966 white Corvette convertible. And so I got to ride in that car many times. In the four years that followed that, I religiously looked at something called a newspaper with uh, classified ads in it, and there were usually five or six pages of used car ads, and I would always go to the Chevrolet section and find the Corvettes for sale and start to understand how much they were. In September of 1975, I came across an ad for a car nearby in Redwood City, about 15 miles away, and it said 1966 big block, low miles blue. My dad and I drove up there on September 25th, and the gentleman, Dennis, who was the second owner of the car, rolled the door up, and there was this beautiful NASA blue Corvette. Now, they, they spell NASA, N-A-S-S-A-U, but that's pretty close. I was kind of, <laughs> couldn't believe it was NASA blue. I just used that name. Um, on our way up there, uh, my dad and I were driving together in a very large General Motors car, not a Corvette. And on the radio was a song that really became kind of my, uh, the memory I have of that car. It was the Jefferson Starship song, Miracles. Um, I got into that Corvette, Dennis uh, took me out on a local freeway called Highway 280. It's a six lane freeway that goes from San Francisco down to Silicon Valley. It's often the kind of the wilderness side, the west side of the peninsula. Six lanes, it's really open for, for aggressive driving. Uh, after a couple minutes in that uh, car, we were going 120 miles an hour. So I'm a 16-year-old, high school junior, and I said, I'll buy it. <laughs> so we picked up the car that day on September 25th, uh, brought it home. Uh, it was stock except for it had American Mag wheels, Mickey Thompson cover, uh, valve covers, which I changed out in the first couple of years. Um, I, of course, went to Sears and bought my own Craftsman, you know, car analyzer with the inductive reading and timing light, etc., because I wanted to do all the uh, servicing myself. About a year after I got the car, a local store opened up. It was called Corvette Stop. Uh, I went there quite often to buy shop manuals, and I started collecting pieces that I knew eventually I would use to refurbish the car, tailpipes, door sills, seat belts, headliner, clock, etc. cetera. Um, and they still exist 42 years later, Corvette Stop. They're in Shingle Springs, California now. Uh, in any case, that car took me through high school. You can imagine it was crazy to drive this big block Chevrolet Corvette to high school. Then through college, then through my entire 28-year career at NASA. In 2008, I arranged for a body F restoration. So had the uh, chassis sandblasted and uh, powder coated. 
and had the engine pulled and rebuilt, and it came out like a show car. So I started only driving it on the early hours of the weekends on Highway 280. Uh, in 2017, we moved it to a museum in Redwood City called uh, The Great Highway by Gary Pollock. And there it sits with another 12 iconic Corvettes. Um, I do have uh, the, the, the opportunity to drive it on the weekends. That museum is just four miles from Highway 280, where I first drove the car 45 years earlier. So it's still a great place to punch it and uh, get it going. It was just uh, drove it a couple weeks ago. Uh, today we have the privilege of having two uh, special cars that are from the past. Of course, you're going to see three beautiful new ones here. We have Neil Armstrong's 66 or 67 Coupe back here. We want to thank uh, Joe Howard Crosby, who's here today, for bringing that iconic car. And next to it is a 2006 Chevrolet Corvette, of course, that is brought here by Jean Leger, and it has 40 astronaut signatures on it. Um, I can tell you that, you know, 50 years ago, I wanted to be an astronaut and a Corvette owner, and I never could have possibly dreamed that both would come true, and that I would have the privilege to be here today, to be here for the unveiling of the 2020 Corvette. So, you're all anxious to see this beautiful car, and um, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Again, it should come as no surprise that the astronauts truly appreciate the design and power of the Corvette. I know I do. Last night we got a sneak peek, and I asked my wife, do you think I could get one? She goes, no, but I can. So, <laughs> got to deal with that at home. So, we all know, guys, where that's going to turn out. So, but I don't want to keep, keep you waiting any longer. Please direct your attention to the screen. We had a great time last night. We have a video from last night I want to show you. So, please, watch the video. We're here in the Rocket Garden at the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. A very special place to reveal a very special car. And to highlight the influence that aerospace design and innovation have had on Corvette over the years. And the early American astronauts are also our heroes. And so it's not a big surprise that the icons of the space program drove the iconic car of America, the Corvette. And now we're going to make this street again. I've dreamed of working on Corvette since I was a kid. I'm excited to be a part of a talented team that is launching this game here. The first retractable hardtop, mid-engine Corvette Stingray Cooper. The two-panel retractable hardtop operates in 16 seconds. It speeds up to 30 miles per hour at the touch of a button. The Stingray offers the same impressive ability to store two sets of golf clubs even when the top is down. The convertible also carries a coupe front storage compartment, which can fit an airline spec carry-on and a laptop bag. The convertible with the top up matches its outstanding aerodynamic performance, providing 400 pounds of downforce at 180 miles per hour when equipped with the Z51 package. Like all four vets, aerospace and jet aircraft are the inspiration for the designers and then themselves in no exception. They visually echo the passenger seating environment and give admirers a glimpse of the interior selection. First quarter of next year, we'll start building convertibles alongside the coupe, and it'll continue the value proposition that we're famous for. The tracking hard top and actually some other standard equipment requires a premium of $7,500, so it's going to start at 67495 In the world of protecting hard tops, that's a bargain. It's a real honor for me to lead this team that's writing this new book on Corvette. And tonight we're going to add another chapter with the convertible. Please welcome Josh Holder, Program Engineering Manager. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here with us today in a very special place and to be a part of the reveal of an awesome car. You heard in the, in the sizzle reel of me talking about my dream job. Well, last night I was standing between an astronaut and a race car driver, uh, but I still contend that this is my dream job. Uh, my dad bought a Corvette when I was a kid. I've been hooked since then. I get to work for my hero, Executive Chief Engineer Ted Jector, and be a part of an awesome team uh, that helped put together this amazing car. Again, the first 
retractable hardtop, mid-engine Corvette Stingray Converse. Corvette uh, open-air driving has been a hallmark since the beginning. The, the first generation Corvette debuted in 1953 as a convertible only. Keeping that tradition, we engineered the all-new mid-engine Corvette to be a convertible from the start. We developed the foundation, the SIF, lightweight, aluminum and composite body structure with a large central tunnel to manage torsion and bending loads in the coupe when the roof panel was out, and of course, with the top down on the same rate convertible. You heard some of the amazing sacks. Two panel retractable hardtop operates in just 16 seconds. It speeds up to 30 miles per hour, which is perfect if you have to dodge one of those pop-up rain showers around here. The rear glass is power adjustable. Uh, you can adjust it when the top is down to reduce wind noise. And you can even lower it while the top is up if you want to hear a little more thunder from the 495 horsepower small block V8. We talked about utility last night. Again, the convertible can, has the same impressive ability as the coupe. Two sets of golf clubs in the trunk even when the top is down. And shares a front storage compartment which can fit uh, airline spec carry on and a laptop bag. The design of the car is outstanding. Uh, we, we developed the nacelles, we call them, the features behind the driver and passenger. Uh, not just to look beautiful, but to harken the heritage of previous generation race cars like the Corvette SS and the SR2 and the Serve 1 and 2 engineering vehicles. They're also very functional. They keep air attached to the back of the car and contributes to the car's outstanding aerodynamic performance when the top is up. The nacelles are not only racing inspired, but they, they hearken a, a detail that we take very seriously on the Corvette team. We work closely with the race team and you hear the term technology transfer. That's not just a marketing slogan, it's the truth. We work hand in hand with the Corvette race team to develop the street car and the race car. Since 1999 with the C5R, Corvette racing has won 107 races. That's the most of any professional race team in North America. We've won 15 drivers championship, 15 manufacturers championships, and uh, 12 driver and uh, team championships. In 2015, we won the Corvette Racing's Triple Crown, won the 24 hours of Daytona, the 12 hours of Sebring, and the 24 hour of Le Mans. The race car is an awesome machine that you'll get to hear more about next weekend. Uh, we'll give you some more details at the Jeep Le Mans at Rover Brand. But for now, I invite you to come up and join us and get a closer look at the awesome machine.